Here we go. Um, Mino Namodzawin. Mino Namodzawin. Mino Namodzawin. You got it. And this is half for my own benefit so that I can practice saying it too for a panel that I have. Thank you all so much for helping me. Uh, Nishida, feel free to jump into it because I see your hand raised too. Yep. Um, Mino Namodzawin. That was excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Arini, if you have a microphone that is able to, please feel free to jump in with your attempt at pronouncing Mino Namodzawin. Yep. Um, Mino Namodzawin. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Ooh, Ashley, I like your kind of like profile thing for the car. I wonder if you took that yourself. Anyways, I won't get off topic. Uh, you know what to do. Thank you. Um, okay. Mino Namajawin. That was excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, that would be Ashley. Uh, and thank you, Ashley. And with that, Leon, if your microphone is up, please feel free to jump into it. Um, Mino Namajawin. No. Um, just um, so. Mino Namajawin. Yeah. Mino Namodzawin, you got it. You are all going to be Mino Namodzawin experts by the end of today. Uh, Ethan, if your microphone is live, feel free to jump into it. Uh, I'm going to say Mino Namodzawin. You got it. Hi, right. uh, Katarina, you did a great job the first time. Thank you so much for also having like a picture of your face as your profile. That makes it much more helpful for me. I won't pick on you again. Uh, so with that, Nimra, if you could give it a shot, if your microphone is up. Um, me no namo Me no namo You got it. Uh, and with that, Angela, if you want to give it a shot. Okay. Um, me no namo Me no namo That was really good. Crispy. Excellent. Uh, with that, Casey, uh, I know that you're the note taker right now. Uh, but if you want to jump into it and give it a shot, if your microphone is up, go for it. Um, is it Mino Namodzawin? Mino Namodzawin, you got it. Uh, and with that, Amber, saving the best for last, the last kind of like bubble on my screen. I'll probably go in reverse order next time because we have a big group. And I don't want like the people who are last on my screen to always go last. Uh, but with that, Amber, would you like to give it a shot? Um, I think it's Mino Namodzawin. Mino Namodzawin, you got it. Also, Amber, are you and Arini related? I noticed that you have the la same last name. Um, we're not. not <laughs> Wait, am I Siddiqui? No, okay. That's just something that I, I noticed. Think we do uh, have the same last name, we're just not related. It's just a popular last name. Oh, sick. I, I just wanted to check. Uh, I have Taylor as a last name, and like every third person I meet also has Taylor as a last name, so I know where we are coming <laughs> from there. Uh, with that, perhaps our second reader, who I definitely don't need to go check on again because I forgot who that was, uh, F9 can jump into it. But before we do that, uh, are there any discussion points that people want to get into for number one before we move on? I kind of jumped the gun. Um, all right. It looks to me like we are ready to get into two. Uh, and Fnon, there are like two separate discussion points for two that you'll be doing, but they're both like a lot shorter than one and three. So it's like the same amount of reading. I just felt like it made sense to break them up because they were kind of different topics. Uh, so feel free to jump into the readings for two. Got it. Okay. Um, bad or unacceptable actions. Maji Juwa Budzi Win included the inability to sustain a stable relationship on one foot. It is considered harmful and problematic to cause imbalances in the environment. Injustice happens because humans and others are unable to meet their responsibilities and maintain order. As noted earlier, it is important not to romanticize or essentialize a way of life. It was not in a simple task to aim for and achieve middle Namdoza win. It has been and remains a continuous operation, and there are several paths to lead the pursuit of 
No, not Modest Alwyn. Um, actually, for the next reading, I will try to copy the phonetic pronunciation. That's on me. Okay. Of Minal Nab Nabdodazawin. I'm sorry for butchering that pronunciation. Absolutely. Abuse of authority and resulting damage happened, and still does, and thus investment in learning how to communicate in good ways was of utmost significance in the Anishinaabek. Sorry, I, I'm just reading at the same uh, page as uh, you're viewing. Oh, all good. Uh, can we please scroll down a little bit? There we are. Yeah, in a healthy way. Wait, is that, is that the correct line? Um, I believe that it would be where we were. Okay, I, I oh, sorry, we were uh, above. Craft line, so. Yeah in Anasanabe's life. In reality, as Kraft points out, indigenous legal orders or rules were intended to allow for good ties and essentially for any living being to have Minonamo Zawin. Derisa Smith adds, no one can survive well alone. We as individuals rely on the experience and expertise of others to live well in a healthy way. Minonamo Zawin then should not refer to human, humankind alone seeking relief or compensation only for human beings environmental crimes will not result in a sustainable partnership all life has the ability to understand the minimalism of namozawin it's important in the oh is, is that the same word um so what i it is important in its purpose I was uh, adding the phonetic pronunciation. I believe that right now we are on, however, the no, responsibilities to achieve you know, Nama Zawin. Or okay, its purpose is that. the maintenance of the life. Its purpose is the maintenance of life with all relationships. However, the responsibilities to believe Mino Nama Zawin are reciprocal and other beings slash entities have their own obligations and duties to fulfill. Mino Nama Zawin accepts that others, other persons or forces in existence often have their own rules, natural laws, that must be observed to ensure order. Thank Discussion. You so much, oh, sorry, so, I'll read that. All good. Um, so one way that I view natural law is, uh, it is kind of the relationship between cause and effect, where if you are consistently polluting the environment for your own profit, then that environment will be degraded. And when the environment is degraded, then you will no longer be able to profit off of that land on some time scale. You might view it a little bit like karma. So I kind of wanted to ask, has anybody like heard of this concept of like the natural order or like natural laws? And if so, how would you kind of like describe them? Uh, Josh, may I ask you a question? Absolutely. I I'm not sure if I heard the story, but did you say karma? Um, that's like one, not necessarily the same concept, but that's one way that I kind of think about it, where uh, if there is like a cause and an effect, where many, many people who are running our society, they are under the impression that they can continue to extract profits, uh, infinite profits in a finite land, and that would violate natural law because you cannot extract infinite profit out of a finite resource. So are you referring to uh, nature always finds a way, kind of? Uh, kind of, but that way might not necessarily work out in the way that we humans would like. And if we are to find a result that will kind of maximize human happiness and well-being, we need to be very mindful of natural law. So we really can't continue to exploit the earth as we currently are. And when I say we, I don't mean you and I, I mean the people who tend to head these corporations and make all of those major decisions. And that we kind of need to be very mindful of that kind of like give and take. And this kind of, oh, Billy, I see your hand up. Um, well, for, for me, the first thing that pops into my head with natural law is just like, um, you know, if the bees disappear, our ecosystem will collapse. So to me, like just that um, the relationships between animals and plants and humans um, is so interconnected. And to me, that's that's the natural law is that if one 
element of our ecosystem is affected, it actually has a huge ripple effect on the rest of us. That's the first thing that pops into my head. Absolutely. And this also, for me, kind of ties back into the concept of the trust bank, which we touched on in your reconciliation journey, where basically every person has a trust bank. And when you do something kind for that person, when you are there for them, that adds something into that trust bank. And when you harm somebody or do something mean, that would kind of like detract from that trust bank. Uh, I will include kind of like another explanation. Um, absolutely, Ethan, feel free to jump in. Um, so my thought of uh, natural order or natural laws is I would say that there, was, there is a penalty for, for what humans do um, to the earth and what they're extracting, um, depending on the extent, if they're like, you know, cutting down trees for, for profit and such, there's going to be a large penalty compared to someone who's maybe just, um, I don't know, polluting the, uh, the earth with like littering, something small, but there will always be a negative uh, effect. That's my that thought. That is an excellent way of putting it. You can't really harm the earth without that harm being manifest. Uh, if that makes exactly. sense, every negative exactly. action will have a negative effect, whether big or small. Uh, and Tanvi, I see your hand up, so feel free to jump in. I don't know why I thought Ray's hand was on mute, All but good. Um, like I feel every action that any individual like organism takes has a consequence. And the consequence doesn't have to be negative; it could be positive too. But I think. Um, uh, the human population is tending to take a lot of negative actions as, uh, that regard the environment. And so there aren't enough positive interactions to offset those actions. And I think that's leading to an imbalance in the natural order. So yeah, I just, I think finding a balance between the use of nature and the conservation of nature is kind of like what we're looking for in the natural order. That is an excellent way of putting it, Tanvi, and that is kind of what Mino Namad Zawan gets into when it talks about living the good life, uh, is that maximizing these positive actions that we take that lead to positive effects, rather than individual self-interest, which oftentimes will have some knock-on negative effect. The, the intention of having a positive action and a positive effect should be the thing that we kind of like base our society around. And that is kind of like how we're going to live a good life. And that sounds like a really simple thing that like we should probably all be able to get. Like if you do a good thing, a good thing is going to happen. But at the very highest level of our society, that is not really how things are being run. That is one of the reasons that I believe we are experiencing this current ecological crisis. Uh, so with that, perhaps for time, we might move into uh, discussion 2.2. Uh, kind of getting into uh, what does living you know, Mino mean for us. Uh, and feel free to jump in whenever you're comfortable, Afnan. This is a little bit of a shorter one. If natural laws are broken without justice, the civil system starts to break down. And this has been the history of indigenous people. In short, the very pillars of the prevailing legal system and of dominant civilization itself rest on precious ground due to the continued and often inter intentional misunderstandings of natural rules. This pattern must be reversed through the solidarity of all cultures, including non-human peoples. For many, these could sound like a far-fetched idea, suggesting a deep rethinking and reordering of how we handle our culture and ourselves. However, it is hardening to see that work has already begun. In New Zealand, for example, the Wahung Wait, let me say that again. Wahanganui, the Wahanganui River is now legally recognized as possessing personalities and thus rights in the country's legal frameworks. The same is true for both the Ganga and Yamuna rivers in India, Bolivia. Working on a border scale has implemented the rule of sovereignty of Mother Earth and indigenous communities from all over the world have enacted a revi revi revived vision of sustainability that incorporates the principles of eating good or living well, a notion that has regained 
popularity in Latin America. People from a number of areas are now making some much needed improvements to current paradigms. It seems only a matter of time before such a paradigm shift. Pardon me? I think it might be paradigm. Paradigm, sorry. Such a paradigm shifts become commonplace. Thank you so much, Afnan. That was an excellent reading. So what this kind of gets into is that in the same way that we have many, many laws today that are designed to protect people and to prevent those kind of harms that Nino Nomadzoan talks about uh, against other people that will produce a negative result. For example, stealing is illegal. This kind of talks about laws that protect nature and that treat our natural ecosystems uh, as individuals with protections under law. Uh, so we currently have various environmental protection schemes, but many of them center around damage to property or potential damage to human infrastructure. And what this is kind of talking about uh, is more so having the ecosystem itself uh, kind of changing the composition of the ecosystem or preventing its ability to do a certain thing, for example, polluting it, would be considered like a transgression against that individual and would like be treated as like, uh, in some cases, like murder, like killing an ecosystem. It's so, like basically giving nature the same rights as people to a certain extent. Uh, so with that, we might move on to like a little bit of a smaller scale. Uh, what is one way that you could bring Nino Navazan into your life? What is like one positive action that you could take and what positive effect might it have? And this can kind of be on a really small scale, like you could do something nice for a friend. You could, if you know they're overwhelmed, help them with their work and that would perhaps improve their mental health. Or it could be something much, much bigger, for example, joining some activist movement and changing the world. Uh, so with that, I saw your hand up, Adnan. Oh, I thought this was like, uh, I thought you were talking about like a self-imposed rule, for example, like for every unnecessary uh, kilometer I drive that is I, that is not needed for, say, working or whatever, um, maybe I have to plant a tree or I have to spend a specific amount of time um, helping the environment in a way. That is an excellent idea. And what that gets into is kind of like the principle of restitutional justice, where if you commit like an environmental harm, you will do an environmental good to offset that. So that's actually a really good thing to get into. Uh, so I think you said for every unnecessary kilometer you drive with your car, you could consider planting a tree. And although it might be difficult to do that, this is a good way to kind of get us on that track of thinking. And I see Tanvi, your hand is up. I think this like idea is such um, one that you can like apply like everywhere. But um, one thing that I try to do myself is just really be kind to people as much as I can. Um, like even if that just means smiling at them or giving them a compliment, but it just it can go a really long way for someone. So um, yeah, and like I think there's a lot of ways you can really incorporate this idea into life, like. Even by just volunteering at the Halton Kids Initiative and doing that. Um, so, yeah. That is an excellent point, Tandy. So, being kind is something that we talk a lot about, but being kind to each other is one of the fundamentally most human things, one of the most important things that we can do, uh, not only for the ethical reason that is perhaps obvious to everyone and that you don't need me to go over, but also for a very practical reason. Uh, with the technology that we have, we have very advanced artificial intelligence and we can run a very advanced simulations that break down certain scenarios. And we've kind of tried to like simulate evolution on a small scale and gain a better understanding of how that works. And in almost every simulation that we've run, cooperation is a more effective survival strategy than competition. So cooperating and being nice to each other is a very, very helpful thing to do. Uh, so I see that your hand is, uh, Tanvi, your hand was also up. Uh, was that from last time? All right. I see that your hand is up, Ekaterina, so feel free to jump in. All good. Um, well, I, I think I'm like a hoarder for like items. <laughs> so like for trash or like, like a packaging that like looks cute or like just any item I feel attached to. So I think that, you know, that's obviously a bad thing, but like at the same time, I feel like for packaging that looks cute, I tend to like reuse it. So like put paintbrushes in it or like uh, pencils or like use it as a container. And so I think that 
that's a thing that can be applied to this. So that is, sorry. <laughs> I'm done. A really good point. And really quickly, uh, I see that Casey changed your name. Can I call you Cat? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Kat. So that is an excellent point. And if there's going to be like waste that you produce or like plastic packaging and you think it looks nice, keeping it out of a landfill one way or another is definitely not a bad thing. And I see that your hand is up, Ashley. So feel free to jump into it. A positive action I would do is dedicate a whole day to help out either a friend or a complete stranger reach their goals and aspirations. A friend or a complete stranger reach their goals or aspirations. That is an excellent thing. And again, that can help take a lot of stress off of a person. Uh, you absolutely can, Ethan. Uh, feel free to jump in or like raise your hand. Um, so something for me, um, taking say public transit or biking or walking to school instead of uh, just driving in your own car uh, would be a small way uh, to help out. That is an excellent point. So kind of like, again, limiting the amount of time that you spend using a personal vehicle. And I see that Angela's head is up here and I see that Casey put one in the chat, which I will go over after Angela. Um, on a small scale, like bringing it into my life and the life of my family, if like I see my parents have had like a hard day at work or something, I'll just like make dinner that night or help around the house more and to make them have less stress and brighten their lives. That is a great point. So when we're thinking of like how we're going to have a positive effect on other people's lives, a great way to start is with the people closest to you, your family. And I see Tanvi in chat that you wanted to add another point. Um, I might have to say no this time, only for time, just to make sure that like everybody would like to include something. Uh, so Casey in the chat said here that volunteering for the Black Lives Matter event, uh, for example, we're working hard to plan this event. Uh, so that effect is that more people are talking about and recognizing that Black Lives Matter is a very important discussion that we need to have uh, in 2020 and perhaps be more aware of the racial issues uh, in their town that exist uh, as they do in every town. Excellent point. I see that your hand is up Iman and I also see Nishida. Uh, so Iman, jump into it and I do see either Nishida, I promise I didn't forget about you. Um, kind of related back to what Tim said about being kind to other people. Um, it it kind of like builds off of that, but being considerate and kind of um, understanding or realizing that um, you don't know what's going on in everyone's life. So just being kind to of them could have like the greatest impact that in a particular day for a particular person. Yeah. Being considerate or understanding that you kind of perhaps don't know what everybody's going on. And that's actually a really, really good point to kind of know that you don't know. That's something that a lot of people I find are not the most aware of. And being aware of that can really go a long way to helping you be more empathetic and be able to more genuinely help and relate to other people. That's an excellent point, Iman. Thank you for bringing that up. And with that, Nishida, I see your hand is up. If it were actually raised, your arm would be tired. Uh, feel free to jump in. Um, so I think that's something I personally can do is um, volunteer at various organizations that can help to make other people's lives better. And so to donate my time to doing that and also to donate money to those causes to help raise funds to these people that need help. That is an excellent point. Thank you so much, Nishida. So money is super, super, super important. Many of these not-for-profits are very, very tight for funding. Us as students might not have a lot, uh, but if you were born rich, it may not hurt to redistribute that a little bit to causes that you deem worthy. Uh, and if, like me, you don't have a ton of money lying around, donating your time is also a great thing to do. Uh, so with that, perhaps Nishida, you could get into our last discussion point for today. I see your hand up there, Nimra. Actually, I don't want to cut you off. We'll do one more uh, thing for this one discussion. Uh, so Nimra, feel free to jump into it. Um, I think something I can personally do is shop um, sustainably because not only does that make you feel better about what you're buying and what you're using every day, but it also helps the environment. That is an excellent point, Nimra. So my most recent clothing haul was sustainable. They claim that it's made out of all recycled fabrics. 
But one thing that's occurred to me is that one, I don't know if they're telling the truth, and three, and two, there are still many other costs, including transportation associated with that. So one of the most sustainable things that you can buy, which was brought up before, is buying secondhand. Uh, so if there's a thrift shop, I have a friend named Mona, her outfits are always on point, and she buys all of her clothing from thrift shops. So it, it's not impossible to look fly and help the environment. Uh, so with that, Nishida, perhaps you could get into our last discussion point for today. Uh, sorry, Tanvi and anybody else who wanted to jump in, we are running a bit short for time. Yep. Um, so how can we live well? There are indeed significant challenges facing Indigenous peoples as they seek to live well. The world's political and economic orders continue their onslaught of Earth, contributing at the same time to the undermining of Indigenous peoples' very way of life. Heather Davis and Zoe Todd argue that it makes sense to set the start date for humanity's current ecologically disastrous trajectory as one that coincides with col colonialism in the Americas, as this allows us to understand the current state of ecological crisis as inherently invested in a specific ideology defined by protest capitalist logics based on extraction and accumulation through deposition. Logics that continue to shape the world we live in and that have produced our current era. This situation characterizes the lived reality for indigenous peoples, yet they continue to work to foster and tend to strong relationships to humans other than humans and land today. Thus indigenous resistance in the face of apo apocalypse and the renewal and resurgence of indigenous communities in spite of world ending violence is something that Euro Western thinkers should heed as we contend with the implications of the imperial forces that set in motion the seismic upheaval of worlds back in, 19, in 1492. How can indigenous legal orders and systems of knowledge influence the outcomes of such devastating and dominant ontologies? Indigenous environmental justice, which can also be defined as living well with the world, has achieved global attention as a result of the concerted contribution, contributions of indigenous peoples over decades. It is from these actions that innovations such as the United Nations Agreement on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the Bolivian Rights of Mother Earth, and the Universal System for Human Rights have arisen. While these efforts are limited by numerous influences, they provide opportunities for more advancement in Aboriginal self-determination and well-being. As noted earlier, the problems are enormous, but Indigenous awareness remains to educate the alternative future and should be productively engaged in undermining and dissolving the universalizing and aggressive logics. At the national level, the Anishinaabeg legal orders have served and safeguarded the survival of Anishinaabeg for thousands of years, yet these rules have also clashed with the legal orders of other countries. Both historical and current treaty partners Anishinaabeg's legal practices, for example, were revered by outsiders in the early international relations that culminated in nation-to-nation -nation treaties, such as the Niagara Treaty of 1764. Nation-to-nation -nation relations provide space for the expression of the rules and justice of Anishinaabeg, which in turn lead to a fair and just relationship with other nations. The truth is that indigenous nations and their livelihoods are under relentless pressure from colonialization, capitalism, industrialization, and globalization, a very disposition, dystopian scenario. As White points out, David and Todd say, in a calculated way, the mechanisms of colonization have cut off ties. Because it was through this severing that depth disposition and incorporation could take place. The genocide of the Americas was indeed a genocide of all sorts of relatives, animals and plants alike, the problems of extreme centuries old and unrelating. However, indigenous peoples continue to follow alternative visions, such as the Universal Declaration of the Rights of Mother Earth. From the 2010 World Pe People's Conference on Climate Change and the Rights of Mother Earth in Cochabamba, Bolivia. Indigenous communities at grassroots level need help in their attempts to envision and seek new futures and to prompt the, promote their engagement in topics of nas national and global interest. The Anishinaabe idea of 
Mino Namozawin is an act of justice. Although on a wide basis, this idea can be seen to be embraced by many indigenous communities. On a more comprehensive level, there are many conceptions of justice as there are indigenous nations and cultures and their disparate legislative government and information structures must be endorsed and articulated. It is hoped that such exchanges at all these levels and scales can contribute to novel governance institutions and legal approaches, but this remains to be seen. As White and Davis and Todd point out, it took more than five millennia to get to the place of reckoning that we now are at, and it might well take that long to recover. What is sorely needed to also imagine alternative worlds, alternate worlds, is to build space for Indigenous peoples to continue to enact a self-determined future so that they can again be inspired to encourage dreams of living well for each other and with the earth. Thank you so much, Nishida, for that very powerful reading. So basically, when it talks there about colonialism as one of the dominant influencers of how we shape our world, uh, is that at the very highest level of our society, of our means of production, uh, of how we live our lives, the people who kind of decide what happens are largely under the impression, and this is not only my opinion, but that of academic experts, the people who run our society are under the impression that the natural law does not apply to them, and that it is their domain to infinitely exploit and extract for their own benefit, uh, regardless of what happens to other people. And what today was kind of meant to show is that it doesn't really have to be that way, and in fact, for the longest time, it was not that way, and that it is very, very possible to produce a society and a way of living that is focused on human well-being uh, and taking actions that you believe will have a positive effect in the world rather than self-interest. Uh, and indeed, that that approach, the one centered around helping the world around you and taking actions that you believe will have a positive effect on the world, will produce the most positive life for you. That is what will make you the most happy. Uh, and that, again, these systems, they've been around before, so we really don't have to start from nothing and we're talking about radically reshaping the society that we live in, we kind of have much of the framework that we need. So when we talk about moving away from a society focused around self-interest and more toward a society focused around the common good, what is one impact Mino Namazawin could have in our lives if everybody followed it? So if instead of focusing mostly on self-interest and profit, we focused on collective good and adhering to the natural law, where we are all trying to add something positive into this world and to uh, focus on a more collective project. What is one influence that you could see that having and how might that affect climate change? Uh, I see Casey here saying in the chat that we'd be much more happier and we'd be quite a bit more productive, uh, which are both excellent points. Uh, so like again, having that shared connection with our nature and with our fellow people is something that we fundamentally need as people to be happy and when we are happy, many studies show that we are also more productive. So funnily enough, maximizing happiness also maximizes productivity. Uh, I will stop rambling and let Tandy jump in. Um, I agree with Casey, and I also think like, um, so yeah, like I, I think we wouldn't, we wouldn't be more happy and we would be less self-centered. I think we would like we'd bring more together. I think this like sense of being in a team would help combat climate change and really like even stop it maybe because we know that we're all in this together <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, perhaps in the YouTube could, like, come together to stop what's going on uh i could not agree more tanvi perhaps in the youtube video we could like have that song playing as you say that or maybe that's just wishful thinking i don't want to overburden our editor uh, but that is an excellent point. And I see your hand up there, Lily. Um, I think even just like how our cities look would be a lot different. City planners would prioritize nature. They would prioritize animal pathways. And I think the way that we see the suburbs, it wouldn't, it wouldn't exist, right? So what we would see as how we live together and with nature and with animals and all living things would be much different. So even our landscape would just be totally transformed. 
That is an excellent point, Lily. And uh, to build off of that, that would have a tremendously positive effect on climate change because the urban suburb uh, is perhaps one of the worst contributors to climate change, at least within like the specific city setting. Uh, and I do see that Tanvi's hand is up, <laughs> which may have been from last time, although I saw like a second hand that was up that went away. Uh, is there anybody else who had anything to like say? Well, okay, I see Afnan, your hand is up. All good, Tanvi. So I was going to say that, oh, wait, let me move my hand. I feel like, so whenever like I personally go on a walk or and I go somewhere with nature or go hiking, I feel really calm. So I feel that if we prioritize nature we'd also be prioritizing in a way calmness and um relaxation because i feel like when you when there's a lot of nature around you feel like a sense of calm and relaxation you feel you're kind of down to earth that is an excellent point of knowledge like existing in nature and being around our fellow people who care about us and who we care about them that's just like kind of like biologically something that like makes us feel good it's a very fundamental part of being human and that natural law that i spoke of is kind of although we don't really learn at least i didn't learn about it in school i can't speak for everybody it's something that's kind of like very fundamentally built into us so one way to follow natural law is to ask if like I feel good about this action or at least like I read that like seven in ten people so everybody here has like a fundamentally good moral compass uh I saw Iman actually in the chat uh so feel free to jump in Iman um I agree with um what people did previously um especially in terms of consumption um if people um took into consideration what they consume, how what they consume impacts the environment or anybody else, whether it be the workers or, you know, um, land be, the land being used and how that would affect the animal, you know. If everyone um, thinks in terms of how everything is connected in all levels of um, the industry and the manufacturing, then they would see, they would realize like how much of an impact what they consume has on everything else and how much of a negative impact, sorry. Um, yeah, and in terms of um, natural law, it kind of, I took a law class and it kind of reminds me of the state of nature where um, everyone is equal in the state of nature as they are. So no one is above anyone else. And I think that should also be in reference, that should also relate to um, the environment because we can't act like as if we are superior to, you know, Mother Earth. Like they're, the Earth, we, re we really rely on the Earth. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it is indeed the earth that made us, at least uh, from my set of beliefs. So that is a, an excellent, a very thorough answer, Iman. So when we become more aware of what we're consuming, and especially like under Mino Namadzawan, workers would have probably much more of a say in what they're producing, how they're working, how they're being compensated, uh, whether or not the factory that they work in is going to be releasing this into the stream that's in their city. Uh, because when decisions are made at that local level, at the factory level, workers who work in that factory are much less likely to pollute a lake that they have to drink from than some executive in London who does not have to drink from that lake. Uh, so when we become more aware of what we're consuming, when we gain more power over um, how we produce things, we begin to see things more like a system. And that is an understanding that I feel like a lot of people haven't had the opportunity through their education to fully understand how everything, like you mentioned, Iman, is connected and as a system and how uh, every interaction within one part of the system will have some knock-on effect in another part of the system. And that this can allow us to not only see the negative effects that our current order of things are having, but also what positive things we might be able to contribute uh, with the sum of all human action, like with all of us as a species working together to make the world a more livable and sustainable place. Uh, we, we quite literally could change the world in ways that I, I could not imagine where I'm sitting right now. 
So there is a tremendous potential for good within all of this. Uh, and I, I tend to get a little bit pessimistic when it comes to climate change, but I, I really can't emphasize enough that things can be better, that we have that power, and that we are not starting from scratch. This kind of has all happened before. We have these systems of good living in place. And this is one of the reasons why I believe, at least perhaps I'm a bit biased, uh, that indigenous peoples are so very key uh, to addressing many of our current injustices, uh, namely climate change. Uh, so with that, are there any other discussion points that people want to throw in, uh, impacts that Minonamadzawin could have in our day-to-day -day lives and how that might affect climate change? It's looking like we might be ready to move on. So we have a little bit of a summary section here. And I'm reading that it's mostly a read on your own thing. This was an excellent idea that Lily got to me. I put a summary also on the kind of like first thing, and I'll also be doing that through the third thing. But this is kind of like your one-stop shop for key terms. For example, Minonamadzawin, uh, environmental justice, what indigenous perspectives constitute, and examples of Minonamadzawin, uh, hats off to Lily, this is tremendously thorough. And now perhaps we will talk a little bit about the weekly media pieces. So I have had the opportunity to go through them, although not with the amount of depth that I would like to before giving feedback and a ticket amount. So you already know today's topic is going to be Mino no Zawin, the good life. Uh, and also just one thing that I forgot to mention last time, and that is mostly something that I think you're already all aware of, the content really does have to be your own to be eligible for tickets. But there are some images, like there was one specific Canva post talking about the three perspectives. I don't want to like shout people out, but it was a very, very good post. It was about five slides long and it had like a stock image as a background. That's okay because the stock image is like enhancing the overall piece and the overall content is still your own. Uh, so I hope that provides a little bit of an explanation. Again, you already mostly know this, but if there are any questions, please feel free uh, to ask them. And also the content of superb quality, uh, namely content that I think we should share on our Instagram, will be awarded, for example, two times, three times, or four times tickets. And I'll ask people if I'm allowed to like show that, perhaps in the Google Classroom as like an example. I see your hand up, Afnan. Uh, can we use like another app to like make our thing? You absolutely can. I think there was one person who used an app called WordPress or WordArt or something like that to make their own unique piece. Uh, and that is 100% something that I would encourage. At the bottom here, it says that like uh, there's definitely room for your own idea that's not featured out of like Canva post blog, IGTV blog, or email to a community leader. And uh, if I'm like really, really impressed by this, I will perhaps add it and like give a little bit of a tutorial as to what it entails. All of that is to say, yes, it can be from any app that you'd like, as long as it is your own work. And I see that your hand is also up Canvi. Um, I just had a question. Um, uh, it's, it's been a busy week. So is it okay if I handed my, um, what is it called? Oh my God. Task. Um, a little later, like by the end of this. So I, unless there's like a very good reason that I need something at a specific time, which will come into place perhaps next week. I am not really one to do like late marks. Ideally, it would be in by the next Monday, but if you're really busy, uh, as long as you can get it in, you will still receive full points, which I believe is five tickets per task or more if they're really good. Uh, they're all really good, obviously, but ones that like stand out in my head, I will award more points for super quality. Uh, there was one more thing that I wanted to say. Oh yes, next week there might be a thing where you are submitting like a question or a policy item or an action item that we want to share with adult guests. And that would be like something that, oh, I'm cutting off a little bit. Uh, is anybody else hearing my audio quality cut off a little bit or would that just be the friend who let me know? All right, it looks like I am mostly clear. Uh, I will look into that growing up meeting, but that might be a Wi-Fi issue. Uh, feel free to jump in, Leon. Um, so for the assignment, um... It's not really an assignment. Um, I don't know what it's called anyway. So do we have to um, turn it in in Google Classroom? Yes. So Google Classroom is going to be your one-stop shop for submitting it all. This is something that I heard when we did focus groups uh, from our friends to see what would work best for them. 
Uh, and Tanvi is saying if she could talk to us for around five, uh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, and anybody who at any time would like to chat with Billy right after the meeting is absolutely free to. Uh, Willie, is there anything that you would like to add or think that I should touch on before we head out for today? As it is 5.30. I think, I think that was good. I'm glad that we spent just a little bit more time talking about like what the uh, media pieces are supposed to be. So feel free to use like some of these like summary shots to develop uh, how you want to talk about it. And I think outside of just the media piece, take a look at how to take action. So these are just some more ways of how do you like internalize this way of thinking? It really is a continual journey, right folks? So I hope that some of these words and concepts just start like feeling more integral into your life and you'll start to see that living the good life um, really isn't that difficult as long as we're intentional. So I, I really appreciate Josh, um, you putting together this week's uh, discussions and for you guys joining us. Thank you so much, Lily. And that's actually a great segue into next week where we were, we'll look at movements by young people across the world who perhaps may not have the resources or the money of a very large organization uh, and how when we come together, we can actually have a much, much bigger impact than we think. And that's actually in the agenda right now if you want a sneak peek. Uh, if not, uh, I can take one more question. Actually, I was just, I was gonna ask like how what are some recommendations to be featured like if you like what are kind of the criteria if you want to be on the Instagram that page is an excellent point and what I will be doing after I grade them tonight likely tomorrow will be uploading an example of like something I think should be featured on our Instagram to classroom and kind of breaking it down because without an example in front of me. I feel like I wouldn't really be able to give the best answer. So I will be uploading one to Classroom tomorrow, although tentatively something that would require like a good amount of effort. Uh -huh. like generally speaking, effort is like what I'm looking for, but like as for an example, I'll be able to get one up tomorrow. I already have one in mind. Uh, and I'll also ask that person if they're comfortable with me sharing their work overall. Uh, and if there aren't any more questions for the group, of course, always feel free to stick around after the meeting, uh, as some friends like to. Uh, but I'd just like to really quickly thank everybody who's here. So thank